Hello and welcome to News Now. I'm your host, Taylor Inman. We're going over this week's biggest headlines and what's coming up for Northwest Montana. The family of a woman who vanished while paddleboarding in the Hungry Horse Reservoir in July is offering a $25,000 reward for information leading to her whereabouts. Relatives of 33-year-old Emily Ray of West Glacier are looking for any information that could lead to her location, including photos, videos, and sightings, according to Casper Communications, the public relations firm hired by the family. Ray went missing July 16th. Anyone with information is urged to call the tip line at 406-758-5610 or email tips at flathead.mt.gov. The $25,000 reward is for the first valid tip leading to the return of Ray by November 30th. It applies to non-water recovery information owing to the intensive search and rescue work underway at the reservoir, according to the communications firm. The Flathead County Sheriff's Office has been searching for Ray for over a month in the Hungry Horse Reservoir. Boat teams equipped with sonar and underwater robots, canine teams, ground teams, two bear air helicopters, drone teams, and divers have been deployed in the search effort. Most recently, authorities employed specialized side-scan sonar to navigate challenging deep water terrain. In addition, a communications campaign, hashtag Eyes for Emily, and a website have been established as a source of information. A volunteer form and a downloadable missing persons flyer can be found on the website as well as a donation link to support the search and the Eyes for Emily campaign. There are also official Facebook and Instagram accounts set up to provide updates. Tribal leaders in Montana urge Republican U.S. Senate candidate Tim Sheehy to apologize over remarks he made to supporters about Native Americans being, quote, drunk at 8 a.m. and throwing beer cans at him on the Crow Reservation. Audio recordings of Sheehy's derogatory comments were obtained and published by Charcousta News, the official publication of the Flathead Indian Reservation. Sheehy is backed by former President Donald Trump as he challenges three-term incumbent Democratic Senator John Tester in one of the most closely watched congressional races in the nation. A Republican victory could help swing control of the closely divided Senate. Sheehy is heard commenting in one of the recordings that his ranching partner is a member of the Crow Tribe, with whom Sheehy ropes and brands cattle on the tribe's southeastern Montana reservation. Sheehy said, quote, Great way to bond with all the Indians, to be out there while they're drunk at 8 a.m., end quote. In another recording, he describes riding a horse in the parade at the Crow Fair, an annual gathering in Crow Agency that includes powwows, a rodeo, and other events. He said, quote, If you know a tough crowd, you want to go to the Crow Res. They let you know whether they like you or not. There's cooler light cans flying by your head riding by. The Rocky Mountain Tribal Leaders Council, which represents 11 tribes and First Nations in the western U.S. and Canada, said Sheehy's comments perpetuated stereotypes about Native Americans. Council Chairman Bryce Kirk asked Sheehy to apologize in a Tuesday letter to the campaign obtained by the Associated Press. Kirk said, quote, You ask for our votes and then you go to your fundraiser, ironically flowing with alcohol and laughter at our expense behind closed doors, and you insult us with a stereotype that only seeks to severely diminish and dishonor our people, end quote. A Sheehy campaign spokesperson did not dispute the authenticity of their recordings, which the tribal newspaper said came from fundraising events held in Montana last November. Sheehy is a former U.S. Navy SEAL with no previous political experience who moved to Montana a decade ago and founded an aerial firefighting company. He knows members of the Crow tribe and visits the reservation to work cattle with them, said spokesperson Jack O'Brien. O'Brien did not say if Sheehy would apologize or otherwise respond to the tribal leader's request. Montana has seven Indian reservations and almost 70,000 Native Americans, representing about 7% of its total population, according to U.S. Census data. It's a voting bloc that has long been considered Democratic-leaning, but Montana Republicans in recent years have courted tribal leaders hoping to gain their support in elections. Crow Tribe Chairman Frank White Clay did not immediately respond to a message left with his office seeking comment. Tester's campaign declined to comment on the matter. Charcousta News Editor Sam Sandoval said Sheehy's campaign had not responded to his outlet's queries about the recordings, which he said came from a credible source who wanted the comments publicized in a tribal newspaper. The Montana Department of Corrections is eyeing a property in Kalispell as a future location of a 90-bed pre-release facility. The center would be located on East Oregon Street at the former Greenwood Village Inn and Suites Hotel. The Montana legislature last year set aside $7.1 million in funding for a pre-release center in Kalispell. Department of Corrections Director Brian Gutkin said pre-release centers are staffed 24 hours a day, 7 days per week, and require residents to follow rules that support accountability and community safety. Pre-release centers are designed to assist offenders with their transition from a secure facility back into the community and provide an alternative to incarceration. The state has 10 such facilities in Montana. The Department of Corrections is holding a public hearing on the facility on Tuesday, September 10th at 6 p.m. The meeting takes place at the Hampton Inn in Kalispell on US 2.
The state has applied with Flathead County for a conditional use permit to operate the center. The property is zoned residential, which conditionally allows for a community residential facility. The County Board of Adjustment is set to vote on the permit at its October 1st meeting. The state has entered a buy-sell agreement for the almost three-acre property owned by White Chip LLC, contingent on approval of the center, according to an application with the County Planning Department. The 47-room hotel would be repurposed to be used as the center, but the adjacent RV park would remain. While in the pre-release center, residents live at the facility but travel out into the community according to an approved schedule, according to a letter as part of the application. Pre-release centers serve a valuable role in communities by providing a supervised setting, and residents are expected to maintain a fully structured schedule, which includes employment, treatment, and counseling, and educational courses or vocational training, according to the letter. The residents will be able to use the areas around the existing building, but will be restricted from venturing into the adjacent neighborhood and mobile home park, according to the application. As of Tuesday afternoon, the planning department had received a handful of letters from residents saying the location is not suitable for a pre-release center. The state contracts with nonprofit organizations to operate pre-release centers in Billings, Butte, Bozeman, Great Falls, Helena, and Missoula. The Flathead region, comprised of Flathead, Lake, Lincoln, and Sanders counties, does not have a pre-release center. The state agency has determined a need for a pre-release center based on population information, showing that counties supporting existing centers are in all top 10 in terms of population in Montana based on 2023 numbers. The department reviewed sentencing information for offenders from July 1, 2023 through June 15, 2024, and found that 154 offenders were committed to the Department of Corrections for a full or partial sentence from the Flathead region. In June, there were 136 offenders in the pre-release centers from the Flathead region. Had there been a facility here, these offenders may have benefited from services provided at the center close to their hometown, the agency noted in a document outlining the need for a pre-release center in the region. The agency also stated that the region has appropriate mental health and chemical dependency services, adequate job opportunities, and opportunities for basic education and post-secondary education. The state's unemployment rate was 3.1 percent for May 2024 and Flathead counties was 3.3 percent for the same period. A key component of the pre-release center program is the requirement for residents to work, so the center would potentially add 90 workers to the area, the agency noted. Heavy opposition arose to a proposed pre-release center on U.S. 93 South in Kalispell in 2009, which ended the project. A survey at the time conducted by Montana State University Billings found that 74% of respondents opposed the 40-bed facility, according to a previous Daily Interlake article. Thanks for joining us. News Now is a podcast from the Daily Interlake. We're proud to be the largest independent newsroom in Montana and the oldest paper in the Valley. Consider becoming a subscriber to support our work. Call Circulation at 406-755-7018 or go to the Subscribe tab in the top right corner of our website. And if you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode of The Pod. Everybody stay safe and have a great week. Thanks to our sponsor, Lauren's Auto Repair, at 1309 U.S. Highway 2 in Kalispell. Most consistently rated five-star shop serving the Kalispell area. Visit Lauren'sAuto.com.